Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Last month, the Flat Earth community was rocked by the death of Mr. Rob Skiba from COVID. He became ill in September, lingered on a ventilator for over a month, and finally succumbed to the disease in October. Almost immediately, the anti-vax community wanted to try and blame it on everything. They wanted to blame it on the ventilator, on him having a heart attack for unknown reasons. They wanted to blame it on everything except for the true cause of his demise, which was COVID. That is what led up to him being on the ventilator. That's what led up to his heart attack. At the beginning of this month, we lost Flat Earth Foker. Flat Earth Foker was a fixture in the British Columbia anti-vax community. He was a vehement anti-masker COVID denier, something that he called convid. He became ill at the end of October. He continued to live stream, demonstrating his symptoms, going into big box stores and exposing his community to a potential fatal disease. He was found dead on the 3rd of the 4th, and the coroner is still investigating the cause of death. But based on the symptoms that he was exhibiting, I think it's going to come up to be COVID. We'll see. Now, while I join the entire community offering my condolences and sympathy to his family, I think that this was a senseless death due to a vaccine-preventable disease. And as a physician, I think that I should address it. So let's cue up the music and have a chat about it. Now, obviously, I'm not Mr. Pahar's treating physician. I've never examined him. I don't have any lab results on him. But as an internal medicine doctor, one of my jobs is kind of playing detective. Um, if you let them, people will generally tell you what's wrong with them. And I think Mr. Pahar is no exception to that rule. So let's listen to him in his own words. So let's listen to his complaints and see if we can figure anything out from this. Um, yeah, so I've been sick for the first time, and my puppy had a bit of a fever, had to take her to the vet because she wasn't eating and had diarrhea and was kept going in the house again, six months old, which is, she's good. She holds it in until she gets outside, but was not able to control herself. I uh, tried to get her better uh, naturally, but uh, I don't know what, she just puts everything in her friggin' mouth. So she did have a fever, that's good to know. I did get her some antibiotics, um, but um, so she's more energized and her appetite's back. Quite uh, bizarre that uh, I'm getting this, these attacks, like so many people getting sick. It's definitely not convid, but convid doesn't exist. Aches, um, really sore throat, a lot of phlegm, uh, hot, like feeling cold so I'm like layered up extra layers and a um, few other things you know a few other so-called convict symptoms but um, I haven't been sick in like so long and it just hit me so I'm like what's going on here you know what happened to my immune system how did this manifest I didn't really change anything so basically, he's complaining of fever and chills and sore throats and weakness and body aches. These are classic COVID symptoms. And he realizes this, which is why he immediately came out and started talking about COVID. And it, you know, he doesn't know what it is, but he knows it's not that. It's kind of like listening to flat earthers. I don't know what shape the earth is. I don't have a model. I just know it's not a globe. Right. So this is a gentleman that's in severe denial because his narrative is that COVID doesn't exist. He doesn't want to get vaccinated. He doesn't believe in masks. At the time that he made this video, he was facing three counts of violating the quarantine order in Canada. He went to a flat earth convention in South Carolina last October, but he came back. He immediately violated the 14 day required self quarantine. He went out to speak at an anti-vax rally at an art center in Vancouver, and then posted it on social media. Now, unfortunately, Mr. Pahar was not unknown to the authorities. Back in the late winter, early spring of 2020, Mr. Pahar had a hot yoga studio at a small town in British Columbia. The Canadian government 
put everybody on lockdown, Mr. Pahar immediately violated that. He continued to have hot yoga classes after sending an email out to all of his customers claiming that the heat of the hot yoga would kill COVID and that they were safe if they went to his classes. He was given multiple warnings and ended up having his business permanently closed by the authorities. He was very active in the anti-vax community. Not only did he put these Facebook posts out about hot yoga, reducing your chances of getting COVID, he also attended parties with other anti-vaxxers, sometimes 14 in a small room, and then posted videos of those parties on Facebook. Now that was bad enough. However, they were all joking about executing the chief medical officer of British Columbia in these videos. That came to the attention of the authorities as well. At the time Flat Earth Foker made this video, he was facing three counts of violating the Quarantine Act in Canada. These violations carried with them a $300,000 fine each and potentially six months in jail each. Now you would think that in this day and age of the pandemic, if you were obviously ill, the last thing that you would do is go outside and potentially infect other people in your community. Not Flat Earth Foker. So let's hear it again in his own words and the blatant disregard that he has for the people around him. I was at my buddy's shop and this guy came in there, got the conversation going towards Convid, because I said, because he said, oh, his back sore, and I go, oh, my whole body sore. He asked me why, and I told him, because I'm sick. And then it turned into, uh, I go, but it's not Convid. Convid doesn't exist. And he, oh man, he was so triggered so emotionally charged he knows like three or four people that died from convid man but it's like i'm like listen he goes i don't want to have a conversation and i, I don't have an argument i go i don't want to argue i just want to have a discussion about what we're told man these fucking npcs all they know how to do is fucking interrupt talk over hold on kept putting kept face palming me <coughs> that hurt so much And like jacked up on extra strength Advil and Tylenol for the last two days. That's the only way I can function. If I'm not on Advil or Tylenol, I'm lying in bed. All right, so let's look at what we have right now. He's obviously quite ill. He's been quite ill for a little while. Now, rather than stay at home and take care of himself or, God forbid, seek some medical care, he's just going about his business. He's sitting in his friend's shop. He's coughing, he's complaining of body aches, he's obviously indicating that he's sick. Somebody asked him about it. And he, you know, his first thing is, well, it's not COVID because COVID doesn't exist. Well, apparently this gentleman had known some people that have died, as do many of us. Yet he thinks that his personal opinion and his personal desires take precedence over everybody else's needs or safety. So he's out exposing his community. Notice he's coughing and hacking stuff up right now, complaining of what sounds like pleurisy, possibly from a pneumonia. You know, when you get a lung infection, the pleural membranes around your lung become inflamed and it hurts to cough. It's a burning pain. Many of us have experienced that with bronchitis in the center part of our chest. If it's off to the side, that many times is an indication of pneumonia. As are shaking chills, not only is he completely unconcerned about this, he spits infected phlegm out his car window because he couldn't be bothered to get a tissue. I think the thing that bothers me the most about this is not only does he fail to recognize that he has a potentially very serious illness here, he's completely unconcerned about passing that illness on to other people. Let's listen a little bit more. Hey, when this guy at Buddy's shop kept interrupting me, like, how do you... How do you, like, he's got both shots and no side effects. <clears throat> and he thinks he's protected. And he said, he already asked for the booster shot. He said, yeah, I already asked that I want to be first to get the booster shot. Because I'm like, you're going to have to get that for life. He goes, yeah, it's like the flu shot every year. I'm like, wow. And he, he's well connected. He actually makes good money, has good money, and actually had a huge company in British Columbia. His doctor just ha so happens to be one of the top doctors in British Columbia. I'm not going to mention his name, but he's been on the news. He's, you know, doctor of, uh, uh, let's just say, celebrities or, or things like that. And it's like this doctor. My doctor, he's the top doctor. 
I'm not just listening to Barney Henry and you know Fauci. And then uh, he mentioned his doctor's name. I'm like, okay, how do you change that person's mind? And it's like, this is an Agent Smith that was put there, came in, happened. I've never met this guy. I've been to my buddy's shop so many times. Never seen this guy. Apparently he's a regular there, but I had to show up today. When my energy's depleted, I'm, I'm dealing with this court stuff. I've been sick. I couldn't get this stuff done all week. And all of a sudden, you know, then uh, whatever the system did to make me sick or maybe I manifested it, I'll take control of my own destiny. Okay, maybe it's my negative thought pattern that caused my body to shut down like this and it needs to regenerate and recover, but I'm still pushing it to the limit. I got to take my puppy for a walk over and over again, especially because she's di she's got diarrhea and she can't control it. So I got to go out more often. And it's like, I get back from the walk and I just want to jump into bed and I do jump into bed <laughs> and it just makes this linger longer. You know, anytime in the past when I was about to get sick, I just start gargling with warm salt water. That night, I do it two or three times. Boom, the next morning, I'm not sick because I killed the germs in my throat. And the germs aren't being killed right now. It's just ah, festering here. My th oh, I forgot to get fishermen friends or hauls. You know, here's the problem that we're running into. His body is clearly telling him that he's sick in the middle of a pandemic with symptoms consistent with the disease in that pandemic. Yet his narrative is so strong that he just can't bring himself to believe it. This is cognitive dissonance at its best. Now let's go ahead and have a look at the five characteristics of science denial as outlined by Lee McIntyre. The first one is cherry picking, and he's not really demonstrating that in this particular episode. Conspiracy theory? Obviously. Blatant conspiracy theory. Talking about the police being selected uh, on the basis of being non-playing characters, people that just simply follow the programming. Promotion of fake experts over real experts. You see how he's disparaging not only Dr. Fauci, but this Canadian physician that was the physician of the gentleman that walked into his friend's shop and had what I wouldn't really call a discussion, but called him out for being in public when he was that ill. Poor scientific reasoning, that's number four. He's obviously demonstrating that. His body is clearly telling him that he's sick, but he's not seeking medical care. He's trying to fix himself with gargling salt water. He's paying more attention to the medical care of his dog than he is to himself. And five, unrealistic expectations from science. So what if you have to have a booster shot every year? We have booster shots for a lot of things. Sometimes they're on an annual basis. Sometimes they're every five to 10 years, like a tetanus shot. That's the way medicine works. And um, yeah, so you run into these people, it's like you can't win. And I just stayed calm and I was just like, wow. And I just got to like, let this guy talk. And he was so emotionally charged. And just so happens, no side effect, just so happens to know three people that died of this and even younger people, one my age, but he wasn't listening. Anytime I'm making a point, he interrupts me. Just so happens to have his doctor, one of the, top doctors in British Columbia and he's telling me it's safe and I want you to get the job and it's perfectly safe and blah 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 this thing is real and and he's telling me he works in the hospitals and the emergency rooms are all jam-packed how do you argue with that how do you win that this guy's got his mind made up it's a belief system he doesn't want to scratch you know a level deeper but <coughs> can't win Mac, the lesson to learn here is that this sounds like somebody who actually knows what he's talking about. He works in a hospital. He's got personal experience with this. He listens to actual experts and makes decisions based on what he hears from them. This is somebody that you probably ought to listen to. Maybe if you had, you know, maybe you should have listened to this person, Mac. Now let's go ahead and skip ahead to November 2nd or 3rd. And I'm probably gonna take off on a road trip across Canada, Don. I don't know if I'm gonna stick around for my birthday or I might go after my birthday. I know you're doing the meetup. It is the same day as my birthday again this year. We had a flat earth meetup that just happened to be on a Saturday on my birthday last year. So, but I am gonna go across Canada, me and my dog. So if you're anywhere across Canada and you don't think I'm a complete idiot and you got a spare room uh, even a couch for me and my puppy seven and she'll be eight months next month uh, She's a great dog if you got a bed extra spare room or somewhere I could crash uh, Along the way 
message me and let me know where you live for like a night or two as I make my way over to T.O. And um, I have friends there, I got family there, and I got Shane and Andrew Gordon in Ottawa, Ontario. And I got Bronca there by Barry that I want to go visit. Now, apparently, this wasn't just a cross-country pestilence tour. He wanted to go out and meet people and talk to them and convince them that COVID wasn't real. Now, mind you, this was done on the 1st or 2nd of November. This isn't a Chris guy tour like that and I go to like speeches and all that. I know, I know people don't want to hear me speak. Oh, you know, that's not what I'm going for. But if there's a few people that know me uh, and, um, you know, I do get messages from people across Canada and the world uh, that, uh, you know, I will say they say they admire and respect me. So if there's those people, but it's not like this glamorous Chris Sky across Canada public, high publicity tour. No, I'm not doing any of that stuff. It just, for me, out of this pathetic city known as Vancouver, which is gorgeous, but just to hit the road, find some solitude, and meet people along the way, and just to clear my head. I have a lot of things to think about. And that's why I haven't been making videos. I always think I'm gonna make videos, but what's the point? What's the point? People don't really wanna, most people don't really, they shut me off. Allowing the tyranny to continue, you're allowing people to die, you're allowing our freedoms to be taken away. It's just like Chris Guy said yesterday. And it's funny that he said that. I was like, I've been, when, I, you know, I've been saying that for months and months, years even. And, but he's, you know, and then he went and said it, and I agree with him. It's exactly, exactly, right on. So I give him, even though he's a narcissistic moron that keeps lying to the people, saying he's the only one charged under the Quarantine Act, even after meeting me twice in May and in July, and I said it to his face, and he knows I'm charged and went to jail for the court, violating the court, so-called violating the quarantine act. Even though he knows that, he's still spewing out that's the only one. Is he a shill? No, he's just an egotistical moron and a liar. So even though he's still not feeling well, he's going on a cross-country trip to meet as many people as he can. Taking the time before he even knows where he's going to stay to rail against another science denier, then he even tries to one-up this science denier by claiming that he, too, had been charged multiple times with violation of the Quarantine Act. This is a guy who simply is not getting the message and does not care about anyone around him. On an hour, did you get what I... Yeah, I got that, and um, I couldn't get the nebul nebulizer done. The guy had no idea what I was talking about. I took some, I gave some to Maya. I forgot to give her some today, so I'll give her some tonight. I totally forgot to give her some in the morning. Um, I thought it helped me out, but, uh, so I was feeling better, and I did get my hands on some Iber, you know, that drug, Iber, the pectin, whatever it is, that horse, horse parasite remover. So I did take that and I do feel like 40% better, 50% better. But I am a little bit down right now. So I was better like yesterday and all day today, I was feeling like 50, 60% better. <laughs> and on that happy note, I will bid you adieu. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Stay healthy, get vaccinated, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.
of the science guy.